Hey, it's Tim here. I just wanted to do a very brief video covering Apple Silicon support for Tableau. Essentially a while back I did a video about this and it kind of worked and I just wanted to do a bit of an update because a few people have asked me on Twitter whether they should buy some of the new M1 based Macs um, to work with Tableau. So I'm just going to do a very brief video. It's not going to take long. I'll be pretty honest with you. It's still not an ideal solution. Okay, so here I am. You can see that I'm in Mac OS Monterey. I've got a brand new uh, MacBook Pro. I got one of the new ones, the M1 Max based one uh, with 32 gig of RAM, basically a sort of a mid-level uh, tier spec. Um, I got it because obviously I edit videos, so I went for a slightly spec'd up version, but it's got 16 gig of RAM. Uh, sorry, it's got 32 gig of RAM, not 16, and it's got a one terabyte hard drive. So it's, it's very comparable to what I had before. I Essentially, before this, I had another MacBook Pro, 32 gig of RAM. It had the base sort of level GPU. And the reason I got that is because I do a lot of different things. Of course, I work in analytics, but I also do a lot of video editing and creative work outside of that as well. And so um, what I will say a little later on is that I think it's always a good idea to get 32 gig of RAM if you're on a Mac and you're trying to work in analytics. I'll explain why in a second. But you can see my spec here. Now, you can also see here that I'm in Tableau 21.3.3. This is the latest build of Tableau. And so... The simplest case here is that I've just done a very simple vanilla install of Tableau here. I've just done the default install. And typically, if you did the default install, one of the things you'd get is a driver for Microsoft SQL Server. And I think another driver for Postgres. I'm never sure which two it is, but there's two standard. I think it's Oracle or Postgres. One of those two comes as part of the default installation. Now, what's interesting is I've actually run this installer multiple times. And if I go ahead and just try and connect to one of the most standard databases here, you'll see that it asks me for the driver and I've actually run this installer multiple times and this is actually a bit of a sticking point now there's a couple workarounds to this I have been able to get this to work but it's it's kind of fiddly and it's not supported Tableau is not officially supporting this so it's not ideal if however you install parallels on your m1 base Mac or your Apple Silicon Mac and then on that version of parallels you run a arm version ARM version of Windows 11 and then you install Tableau on that. For some bizarre reason, the emulation uh, seems to sort of work out fine. So here I am, I've switched over. You can see I've got the exact same version, 21.3, 64-bit. This time a Windows install of the same thing. And if I go ahead and I just switch over to the data connection here, you can see that I'm actually already connected to the SQL Server. And I've played around with this. I've done some basic work and it works. And so I'm able to connect to the data. Now, what I'm not saying here is that this is supported and it's going to work fine and you should build stuff off it. All I'm saying is that it's still quite early days for this technology. And so this is sort of the work you have to do if you want to use one of these machines and still will do your daily work. You have to invest some time figuring out what doesn't work and what doesn't work. And that's not ideal because you should really just be able to get on and do your work. You don't want to have to spend time sort of just quickly doing some analysis only to find you've hit a bug. Um, a couple of other bugs I found if I go over to this one, if you try and do an activation via Tableau Online or Tableau Server, it doesn't quite work on the M1 based version here, um, but it does work completely fine on the uh, Windows based version. Another detail is it also depends on the version. For example, when I try that license based activation on uh, a version from 2020, it doesn't work at all. When I try it on 20 2021.3 it works completely fine I tried it in 2021.1 it didn't quite work and I just didn't sort of do any sort of scientific test to see exactly which versions work and which ones don't and so you're probably wondering well what is supported and what isn't supported well the short answer is is none of it supported if you go over to the Tableau uh, community forum there's actually a really good post here uh, I'll put this in the description below as well so you can go directly to it in the links and there's an update here from David Brown from Tableau essentially covering that look um, as of June 2021 and uh, this hasn't been updated I don't believe since um, it's not officially supported so there are things that are going to work the, that's that's absolutely the case you can run it install it it runs on Rosetta absolutely fine but you are going to hit bugs and those bugs are not supported Tableau is not going to go out their way to fix them until they officially either compile a version that works on Amble Silicon natively or I assume they do enough sort of um, coding and work to uh, this version that it runs fine under Rosetta. Quite a few applications have actually done this. If you look at some of the Adobe apps, those run absolutely fine under Rosetta and um, because Adobe have done the work to make sure that it's gonna work fine under Rosetta. But in other cases, other applications just flat out don't support uh, Apple Silicon. So if you're thinking of getting an Apple Silicon Mac, 
be super careful. Um, if you're going to be using this Mac as a daily driver for your work and you just need to get stuff done, I'd recommend you hold on to the laptop you've got. You probably don't want to buy a new Intel-based uh, Mac at all, but you're also probably itching to buy something new and maybe hold out for that. So um, just hold out a little bit more. Tableau's not really said when they're committing to update this. I hope it's soon. I hope it's by this time next year because by then the Apple Apple Silicon transition will have been complete and Apple should only be really selling uh, Macs with Apple Silicon in them only. So I'm hoping that Tableau is sort of matching that pace with development. The other sticking point is that of course um, the but Mac OS versions also change every year. So with Big Sur, then Catalina, and now Monterey, there's always a few bugs that sort of sneak in as Apple changes the base level systems as well. So it's always a sort of cat and mouse game to get a stable version of Tableau sometimes. And even if you had an Intel base Mac, you'll still come across a few bugs in the latest release. So uh, bugs aren't sort of going to always disappear. They're never going to be perfect. But you kind of have to work within the realms of what you know works. So if you're prepared to do some testing and you've got a very narrow use case for this, maybe you're just doing exploration, this is going to be great. I will also say that this doesn't stop you from going on and using WebEdit. You can, of course, use WebEdit to just connect to something on server or Tableau online and just get working. So that's something you should consider. Now, the other thing I wanted to touch on is if you're going to buy one of these Apple Silicon Macs, what should you get? Well, my my recommendation is to get a 32 gigabyte uh, machine of RAM. Now, 16 gigabytes used to be the staple for most laptops, and it still is in most businesses. Now, the problem you're getting is that a lot of these new machines, a lot of new operating systems work on the assumption that RAM is now relatively cheap and therefore it should be in general, available and abundant in machines. And so you're seeing a couple of new trends happen. You're seeing SSDs get faster and you're seeing RAM get faster. Um, even something like Windows 11 um, is optimized to use a new type of RAM called DDR5. And so you get into this world where RAM and hard drive space are getting um, quite accessible. And so um, when developers build applications, they're increasing the amount of resources they need. So if I give you a simple example, let's say you get a 16 gigabyte machine, okay? The base OS typically takes five to eight gig of RAM. So that's already half of your RAM gone if you're sort of using it heavily. Uh, if you open up Chrome, maybe let's say you've got six tabs, that's maybe another gig to two gig gone. Okay, so you started with, let's say eight, now you're on 10 gig of RAM, you've only got six left. As soon as you open up Parallels to emulate Windows, uh, a lot of that is going to go. Maybe you use up four gig, leaving you only with two gig of uh, RAM left. And then if you've got anything else open, maybe it's Excel, maybe you've got a database running, any other piece of work going on, it's going to use up that RAM really quickly. And what you don't want to do is get in this situation where your computer's having to do something where it's swapping information from the memory to the SSD. Now, on Apple Silicon, this actually happens incredibly fast. It's, it's actually silly. The SSD speeds on an uh, Apple Silicon machine are just incredible so you might not even notice that this is happening if you do get 16 gig of ram but you will get much better performance if you have more ram than you have uh, you know ssd space being used by swap so my recommendation is to get the 30 gig of ram it sounds uh, a lot it sounds like you're kind of pushing the boundaries but if you can get hold of it that's definitely the spec to go for um, in terms of everything else you can just get an m1 pro essentially you don't have to worry too much about the m1 max m1 max is really only for video creators and people doing high intense creative work where the gpu cores are really useful analytics doesn't tend to use a lot of the um, gpu cores and the m1 max have a neural engine for some of the machine learning based activities so if people are writing software that's optimized for that that should be using that side of the chip in the long run so um, really you only need an m1 pro um, you could probably get the base level m1 pro that will that'll be completely fine but make sure you get 32 gig of ram get a decent hard drive 512 is the absolute minimum uh, one terabyte is my recommendation again so you can have a lot of applications on your machine but 512 is probably what you'll get for work that's totally fine if you install like 10 applications that you use every single day um, you'll have plenty of space left over to do your day-to-day -day work Okay, um, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, I just wanted to do this simple update on Apple Silicon M1s, just for anyone who's sort of thinking of getting into these, super excited about technology and they use Tableau, just hold out if you want to use this as your daily driver. Or if you do, be sure that you spend a bit of time investing in making sure you have a setup that works. The other thing to bear in mind is that if you get this for work and your computers are fairly locked down, Every time you come across a bug, you're going to have to be on the phone to IT support and they're not going to like that. So they might not even let you get this machine in the first place. So um, just a few things to think about. And that's pretty much it for me.
Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Let me know what else you'd like to see on, uh, an, on an M1 chip from an analytics perspective. I've been able to get SQL Server to work in parallels. I've installed a few other things like Docker as well. So if you've got an idea, something you'd like to run on Apple Silicon that you use with Tableau, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll go ahead, install it and see what works. And I'll try and reply to your comment as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.